If you are a book lover or you've got a few on your holiday gift list this year, we have got just the book you're looking for. Kevin Wilson is a read with Jenna author and a fan favorite who wrote the best selling mm -hmm. Pants on yes. Fire. Everybody, <laughs> that was the one book everybody read it's, from Jenna's book club. It's true. She just, and she calls yeah. it Pants on Fire. Pants on we fire. know it's actually called Nothing to See Here. Now Kevin is out with a new book, a coming of age story called Now is Not the Time to Panic. Welcome back, Kevin. Oh, this thanks. Yeah. Okay, I read this book in a week. I took my a kind of a book vacation from reading forward to mm -hmm. get to read this incredible book. And it really is this coming of age story. And I know it's an important one to you, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it was really personal. It all hinges on this one summer where these two teenagers meet each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but the origin of it and this, this weird line that they write was all from my own life that I kind of built up. Yeah. yeah. It, how, so tell us about how that one line, how it mm -hmm. played out in your life, and tell us the line, if you will. Yeah, so the line is, the edge is a shanty town filled with gold seekers. We are fugitives, and the law is skinny with hunger for us. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it means, but uh, <laughs> when I was in college, I was uh, rooming with this guy, a really charismatic guy named Eric, who was leaving after the summer to go to L.A. to be an actor, and I was working for the medical center putting this policy manual online, and I got so bored that I just started writing random stuff, and no one ever noticed, and I asked Eric, do you have a line, and he said, that, that line, that line. And, 25 years later, it was, it's been burned into my brain. I say it almost every day, and I needed a way to write about it into the story. And then almost when I was finished, Eric suddenly, unexpectedly died. Oh. And so for me, this book was the way to kind of keep that phrase alive and to hear other people say it or read it is that really is, incredible. That is so beautiful. You, you talk about these two awkward teens, and you describe yourself that way, too. You started writing when you were just a young kind of awkward teen. <laughs> I feel like I'm still an awkward teen. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. But I think one of the things for me is that I wanted to write about these two kids who feel like outside of yeah. the regular world. And, you know, the more I live, I realize that I think everybody at some point in their life has felt that way, yeah. that they're on the outside or that they feel freakish in some way or there's yeah. something about them where they don't fit into the world. And especially when you're a teenager... You can have your parents or something say, like, it doesn't matter or you'll yeah. find something, but it doesn't matter. But when you find someone your own age at that same moment who, like, recognizes you, they're like, I see you and I feel that too. Oh. And instead of feeling alone, let's hold on to each other and maybe that will help us find the way forward. It's just such a huge thing when you're a teenager. Oh, oh my God. I know. So this is why Kevin's books yeah. will kind of hit you over the head uh, with humanity. I remember when I explained Nothing to See mm -hmm. Here to my mm -hmm. husband, he was like, you're asking me to read a book about two twins whose pants light on fire? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I promise you it'll teach you about yes. unconditional love. Yeah. And this does the same. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, who in your life saw you for you? Yeah. Who made you feel like, you know what, you can be yeah. it, you're enough? Well, I mean, I think it was Eric because I'd had teachers that had been kind and I'd uh -huh. had librarians that would give me books and yeah. say, you should read this. But again, it's when somebody your own age is like, hey, this is fun and you should think about it. And mm -hmm. you may have been secretly wondering, but then that moment that someone else says it out loud, you think, oh, I'm going to walk towards that light. You know, I'm going to try to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And so even though we, f we would fall in and out of touch... I just always kind of remembered his voice as somebody saying, you know, this is the thing that you can you do. You can do that. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, I'm so interested in what you're writing. I'm also interested in what you're reading. Are there certain books that you have that are among your favorites that you'd like to recommend? Yeah, I do. Uh -huh. So I was trying to think about yeah. these. And because the holidays are coming up, yeah. like Thanksgiving and, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh, that's when after like a whole year you remember that you have like, a family that either you've <laughs> married into or by genetics, and you're like, oh, God, I'm going to see them maybe twice. <laughs> and that panic of like, oh, this is where I came from. And so all three of these books, although they're wildly different, are all featuring kind of interesting family dynamics, mm -hmm. blended family, people coming to terms with like what they were born into or what they made. Mm. And so, yeah, so I have three, if that's okay. all right. Okay, sure. so the first one is uh, by an incredible author, Jennifer Egan. Tell us about The Candy House. Yeah, so The Candy House, Jennifer Egan's one of my favorite authors of all time. And, and this is kind of a sequel to A Visit from the Goon Squad. But to my mind, what makes it so interesting is 
It's all about connections, the way that we're connected by genetics or by relationships, but also connected by technology, which can be a little scary as we think about all these things. But Egan is just such a great writer mm -hmm. that she makes it empathetic and mm -hmm. human and life affirming. Okay, next qu quickly, what are the other two? Yeah. The Verifiers by Jane Peck, which yeah. is like, yeah. I'll be quick, Sense and Sensibility meets Sherlock Holmes. It is the hippest, coolest cool. mystery you can imagine. And that's from a guy that's wearing a very beautiful chartreuse sweater. Okay, yeah. finally, <laughs> what's your last one? Apple, Apple Crush, a graphic novel by Lucy Nisley, which is all about what it means to feel weird as you become a teenager. Is that good for my daughter? It's good for everybody. everybody. Awesome. Kevin, Kevin love you so much. That was awesome. Much. Beautiful. And check out Kevin's books. His newest book will make you feel all the great mm -hmm. things. And his book recommendations at today.com slash books. <laughs>